Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for another Brushstroke Basics video. And in this video, I will be demonstrating techniques for stamping with this gorgeous poinsettia stamp called Christmas Red. Here's a look at that stamp itself and also an idea for how you can use the finished stamping. I used mine to create a tag. And before we begin real quick here, I am going to pop up a list of all the supplies used in creating this stamped panel. I will put the supply list back up on screen at the very end of the video. So if you want to look at it in more detail, see what papers, stamps, inks, paint brushes, whatever I've used, it will be listed and you can just hit pause at that time and look at it in more detail. To begin, I'm stamping in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool onto hot press watercolor paper. And I am stamping first by coloring directly onto my stamp using Tombow dual brush pens. And then once I have stamped that down, I'm going in with just a paintbrush and water and sort of blending and smoothing out that stamping. So I like to use these these markers or these pens when I am working with an image where I need to sort of have some control where I put that ink. So the petals and the leaves on this are really close together and so I wanted to be sure I only put red on the petals and only green onto the leaves. And I'm working in small sections and then stamping that down. Now whenever you apply ink to a large expanse of area like these petals or the leaves on this stamp, and you're using a marker and a brush tip, it's hard to get a really even application of the ink. So what's great about these markers is they are water soluble. So after I've stamped that, I just go in with some water on my paintbrush and just blend it out. And that just smooths that original stamped impression. Now if you stamp this all using uh, an ink pad, say for example you wanted just a really light uh, all one color monochromatic look. You might want to stamp that say with like a VersaFine ink pad. You would not need to go back and do all of this additional blending. So I followed that same technique um, for the entire image, coloring with the marker and then blending with the water, working in small sections at a time. And now I'm going back with an ink pad onto the leaves and I am just using, this is a mini archival ink pad in the color of fern green. And you can see now with the, co the better coverage you can get using an ink pad. And this is going to capture those details that are a part of the leaves. So I'm just putting that onto the leaves. If any areas go onto a petal, I just sort of swipe them off using my fingertip. You could also use a paper towel. And then I stamp that down. I do it a couple of times just to darken up the color. And then just to, and I'm so sorry my head is in the way, but just to darken up those areas that were stamped in those veins in those leaves, I'm just picking up some Distress Ink Reinker in the color of Forest Moss. And I'm using that Reinker ink as a watercolor. So I've just put it onto a palette and I'm picking it up with my paintbrush, just tracing over and painting onto those lines. I want to be careful when I do any of this painting going forward onto the panel that I do not use too much water or too much paint all at once because you have to remember that the very initial stamping that we did, did it, was done with those water soluble markers. So I don't want to start that sort of base coat or initial stamping to do a lot of bleeding or blending. But if you use just uh, very little paint and very little water, it won't. And you can just go back in right on the top and add these details. I would definitely dry this and I did dry in between each step so after I blended all the marker ink I made sure it was dry before I added the next layer of stamping. Now here I'm going to go onto those petals using the Distress Reinkers as watercolors and just add a little bit more shading to those. So I put down the color of Barn Door and then I'm adding some fired brick while that's still wet just to sort of blend that out. I love the texture that you get to these petals and those leaves from the initial stamping, stamping that's sort of built into that beautiful brush stroke stamp. And because these paints or these inks that I'm using are a transparent ink, that beautiful texture will still sort of show through even though you can add some of those darker and lighter colors. 
So I just continued to follow that same process, adding a little bit more paint and blending that out until the entire poinsettia was complete. So here's a look at that finished five by seven panel that I had stamped. And then I use this to make a tag. And I'll just pop that up here. Just a second, I'll put that on screen. To finish off the tag, I trimmed along one right-hand side there. I fussy cut around part of the leaves and petals so they extended beyond the initial part. And I added some distress inks in the color of gathered twigs and antique linen onto the background. I layered this onto a white tag and added a stamped and die-cut sentiment. I thank you so much for watching this Brushstroke Basics video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website and blog, and I'll link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. Happy stamping!